Hello and welcome to another local radio McMastermind competition. And let me tell you a wee bit about it. It's virtually the same as the television version, except that each week we just have the one competitor in the studio. And at the end of a 15 week period, the person with the highest score wins the first prize. Which this year is a fabulous weekend for two, inside a duty free warehouse of your choice at any distillery in Scotland. The prize was kindly donated by the Scottish Illicit Whisky Distillers Association and Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. And could we have this week's competitor into the famous black chair, please? <laughs> oh, hi, my name is Jockey McPherson and I'm a lapsed teetotal distillery worker for Glen Tuckett Distillery on Speyside. And what is your specialist subject? Uh, the history of Glen Tuckett Distillery for March 1834 till they give me my drama this very morning. Okay, Jockey McPherson, you have two minutes on the history of Glen Tuckett Distillery and your time starts now. The two oldest distilleries in Scotland are Glen Tuckett and Glen Leavitt. How did they get their name? Eh, oh, I will in March 1834, two brothers was making an illicit drama in the hills near Tom and Tull, from the spot of the excise coming down the glen. They hurriedly cleared up, but they didn't again fit to do with the copper still. Ian said tuck it, but the other said leave it. Correct. In distillery jargon, which is the odd one out? Drammy, nippy, large one, doing the leg of my bailer suit, Moothful, Toothful, Bucketful, or Colin Cumber? Eh, uh, doing the leg of my bailer suit, it's a hiding place. All the rest is whisky measures. Correct. And which of these has the greatest capacity? Eh, uh, eh, uh, the bucket fee? No, you're wrong, it's Colin Campbell, because when it's free, he takes an awful bucket fee. In the whisky recession of 1980, you were briefly made redundant from the distillery and you got a job with the county working a compressed air pneumatic drill. How did you react? Oh, I well, after coming off the drum, my shack was that bad for a first fortnight. I didn't need any power to work a drill. Correct. You went to old Dr. McCrae in the village with your shake. What was his diagnosis? Oh, he says, Matthew me, Maloon, we're shocked at bad. You mustn't be spilling some. Correct. Your great hero and fellow distillery worker, Colin Campbell, over a number of years carried several thousand gallons of whiskey out through the distillery gates in two hot water bottles slung from his neck. He was frequently questioned by the customs and excise about the swellings on his chest. What was his now famous standard reply? Oh aye, you keep your hands to yourself, my name's Mary. Correct. In 1994, you pulled the wrong handle and 16,000 gallons of whiskey went into the river Spade. What was the outcome? We all learned to swim. Correct. In 1995, when Colin Campbell fell into the spirit vessel, three, thing, three things happened. What were they? Eh, uh, oh aye, the bacteria count went up, production went down, and there was a theft over four was getting to ring with his bailer suit. Correct. In 1996, the distillery was overrun with mice. Why was this? Uh, oh, I Hamish, the distillery cart was a war getting dried out. Correct. When whiskey is left to mature in the oak casks for 10 years, up to 20% disappears. This is rather charmingly known as evaporation or a dram for the angels. But what is the difference between distillery angels or ordinary angels? Distillery angels don't need wings to flee. Correct. Earlier this year you had bored a hole in a barrel and you were siphoning out a, a pailful when the customs and excise came upon you. How did you react? Oh, I will. I was startled, but I finished. Well, at the end of that round you scored 14 points and you never passed out. Well done.